Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we added user authentication to our project. So the users are now able to sign in and out of the application. We also added this auth context file in order to expose the user details and some functions to the rest of the components in our application. We also changed the finance context file to add this where condition whenever we select data. And this will ensure that we only select documents that belong to the logged in user. However, we do have one issue. Because the user ID is set on the front end, it is possible for some savvy user to manipulate the value of the user ID and select documents that belong to other users or even change their documents. Thankfully, Firebase makes it easy for us to control access to documents in the back end through the means of Firestore security rules. If we go back to our Firebase project and open up the Firestore database, we can view these rules by clicking on the Rules tab. So at the moment, if we look at the rules, it's allowing us to read and write documents under all circumstances. So there are no limits here. So what we'll do in this video is we'll add new rules to this file to prevent the user from reading and writing documents that do not belong to them. So let's get started. Right, so if we go back to our data for a second, I just want to explain what these rules will be doing. So if we look at the get income data as an example, what we're saying here is we are fetching data from the income collection. And then we've added this query that says only fetch documents where the UID equals the logged in user's UID. This request is then sent to Firestore and then the documents are fetched for this condition. So you can kind of imagine that in the payload for this request, this user ID is set in the request payload. So back in Firestore, when we try and read these income documents, we want to compare the UID that was passed in the request to the UID on the document itself. Just know that in the security rules, the document that we're reading from is called the resource. So when we call a query on Firestore, we pass in a request and then the document that we're trying to read or update is called the resource. Hopefully that will make sense in a, in a second. So basically when we read the documents from Firestore, we want to compare the UID in the request to the UID on the resource. So let's add rules for the income record first. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this match statement, the one that says document equals star star. So this rule is saying that it's applicable to all documents in the database. And then the rules for these documents are allow read and write basically in all cases. So I'm going to remove this statement completely and add a new statement that's only relevant to the income collection. So I'll type in match. We can then enter the collection as income. And then in these curly braces, we can enter a variable name. So this represents the specific document ID that we're dealing with. So I'll just call it something like income ID, and then we can use these curly braces to add our logic. Right, so within these curly brackets, we can now write the security rules that are applicable to the income collection and then the specific documents. So typically these start with a word like allow, and then the verb like read, write, delete, etc. So for now, let's just enter a read. And we can then add a colon and then we can enter the rules. So as an example, we only want people to be able to read the income data if on the request object, we have an auth object available. So if the user is logged in, the auth object will exist on the request. So therefore we're saying that we should be able to read the document if the request object is not equal null. We can do the same thing then for create. So you can only create documents if the user is logged in and will only allow you to delete documents if the user is logged in. Let's go ahead and publish this. So after publishing these changes to the rules, let's go back to our application and let's refresh our app. After refreshing the app, you will receive this error message, something in, in the lines of missing or insufficient permissions. You can also see these by going to your console in the developer tools. So basically, if you receive any rejections from the Firestore rules, you will receive this nondescript message. Obviously, the message is coming back from Firebase will never be that descript. We don't want to tell the user exactly what the issue is and then allow them to work around it. 
So if you get a message like this saying missing or insufficient permissions, there's an issue with your Firestore rules. What we can see though, when we click on the income button is we are definitely getting through the income history. So we are reading those documents and those income entries are reflected in the balance. However, the expenses documents are missing, and that is because we are not authorized to read expenses documents based on the rules. If we go back to the Firestore database, we can go and add rules for the expenses collection as well. So for now, I'll actually just copy these rules for the income and, and add them for the expenses collection as well. So I'll change this to expenses, and I'll change this to expense ID. So just a reminder, for the income, we are only able to create new income entries. We are able to read income documents and we are able to delete income documents. However, for expenses, we are able to read expenses, we are able to create expenses and we are able to delete expenses. But just as a reminder, when we add expense items, we update the existing expense document and simply append the expense item to the array. So we also need to add an entry for update. So I'll copy down create and I'll just change this to update. Let's go ahead and save this. If we go back to our application and refresh, we should now be able to read the expenses as well as the income entries, which we can. And we can also try deleting one of these expense items, which we can do as well. And we don't receive any exceptions in the console. However, this does not quite solve the, the risk of the user changing the UID manually and then reading other people's documents. So to make this data even more secure, I'm going to add to these rules. So what we want to do is say that when the user requests access to the data, we want to compare the user ID in the request to the user ID in the documents being read. So let's go back to our rules and we'll start making changes to the income data. So for the read, we'll say that the user needs to be authenticated. So the auth object must not be null. And we want to also say that the request dot auth dot UID. So that is the UID being passed in through the request object needs to be equal to the resource. So this is the document in the Firestore database that we're trying to access dot data, which will, which will give us a view of all the fields on the document. And we specifically want to compare it to the UID field. Let's publish this and let's refresh the app. Because our logged in user ID matches the UID on the documents that we're reading, we are able to get back the income values. And if we look at our console, we don't receive any error messages. So if we passed in an invalid value, as an example, let's just remove this for the time being and add in something like one. If we publish these rules and go back to our application, we will get that error message coming back. And based on the balance, we can clearly see that the income entries are not pulling through successfully. So in theory, if someone had to manipulate the value of the user ID on the front end, they will get an exception like this. So let's just add back that logic. So for create and delete, we want to do the same thing. So I'm actually just going to create, so I'm just going to copy everything from the ampersands down to where we compare the user IDs. And I'll add it to the create and the delete as well. And in fact, we can do the exact same thing for the expenses. So I'll add it to read, I'll add it to create, I'll add it to update, and I'll add it to delete. We can publish this and test it out. Let's go back to our application and hit refresh. We're not receiving any errors and we can still see the balance and the expenses. Let's try to add an expense. So first I'll create a new category. I'll just call it entertainment. Let's give it a color and click create. When clicking create, we get this error message. And that is because of an issue in the security rules. Let's flip back over to the, to the rules. So under expenses, when we call create, we're saying that the user must be authenticated, which is correct. However, on a create, the resource in the database is not available, which makes sense, right? We are creating a new document. But what we can do instead is compare the UID on the auth object to the UID that's being passed through on the request for the new document that's being created. So to do that, we'll compare request.resource.data.uid. And we'll have to do the same thing on the create of the income item as well. So I'll replace this line with this check. Let's try that. I'll publish this. I'll try to create this object again. And this time it worked. You can just ignore this one. So let's now select entertainment and click on add expense. 
and this expense was successfully added. Let's try to add an income entry. So I'll give this a value, give it a description and click on add entry. This entry was added successfully. Let's try to delete it as well, which works. Let's also try to change the expense items. I'll click on category and let's try to delete this item, which worked. Let's try to delete this entire category and this worked as well. So now that our security rules are working, we can clean up these rules slightly. So if you have rules that are identical, as an example for the read and the delete, so we could actually just remove one of these, like the delete, and then just add it to this rule over here, separated by a comma. We can do the same thing for the expenses. So I'll just add update and delete to this record and then delete it from here. And that looks much cleaner. So this was a short little video and a very basic introduction to Firebase and Firebase's security rules. If you would like to learn more about Firestore security rules and some of the more advanced concepts, I highly recommend going through the documentation. Right, now that we've got our data secure and we've got everything functioning correctly, we only have one more video to go in this series. So in the next video, we'll actually add Toastify to our application. And we'll use Toastify to display these little pop-up messages whenever you action something on the application, as well as some other small tweaks and improvements to the application. Thank you very much for following along. If you like this series, please consider subscribing to my channel and like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.